This is the electric motor uh, installed in the car. And in context, you kind of get a sense of just how small it is. Like it's 50 kilos in weight. Uh, and it's really not that much bigger than, than a differential, particularly the, the Salisbury differential in the back. That's good because it's more space to put batteries. It's more space to put all the other sort of ancillary systems that we need, like the brake vacuum pump. What you can see around it is all the, the high voltage cabling in the orange coming from the side battery packs, uh, a lot of 12 volt wiring, but also control and management wiring for the batteries in the, in the black cabling. Uh, you can see the front mount plate that goes to the original engine mounts and the adapter plate into the original transmission. To get a better context of, I guess, how this fits, um, I'm gonna cut back to an earlier time when my hair was longer and this motor was in a bare chassis. One of the questions we most often get asked is how the electric motor integrates to the original Land Rover drivetrain. So how do we maintain four wheel drive? What's the gear ratios? Do electric cars have gears? Do they you know, have a manual transmission? Are they always automatic? Is there gears at all? And it's coupling here. So this adapter plate from the motor, and this is called a B-face motor. It's a very standard sort of size and spacing of bolt patterns on the motor. The thing you're doing is trying to get this, this spacing correct so that this, you know, this kind of standard motor can fit up to and hold the flywheel of a, a classic Land Rover. So in there is a metal coupling. In here is the flywheel. We remove the, the ring gear that the starter motor would be in. This is where the starter motor would originally live. We don't need that. This is a giant starter motor in itself. We remove that ring gear, we machine it, we, we make it a bit lighter. Uh, we don't really need that rotational mass. It does help in some ways, but it's not, not critical. It is nice to have a clutch though. Uh, and then here you can see the, you know, the old Land Rover gearbox, uh, dirty and straight off the farm. But basically up from that point onwards, um, as far as this transmission is concerned, it's just got a really torquey motor uh, that's, that you know, acts no differently to the original petrol engine. And with that, we can then go through to the original transfer case, which means we get a front prop shaft, a rear prop shaft, can maintain full four-wheel drive, and of course, have the selectable range of, of gear ratios that you know, give you six, 7,000 newton meters of torque in the rear wheels in low first, but also allow you to go into shift into fourth and you know, be spinning at a, a nice RPM on the freeway. So that's one of the considerations too, is that this gearbox was never really designed to spin anywhere beyond four and a half thousand meters, four and a half thousand meters, four and a half thousand RPM. It's probably not good at four and a half thousand meters either, uh, which electric motors don't need to worry about since they don't need, don't have an air intake. These motors top out at about 9,000 RPM. If we span this at 9,000 RPM, it wouldn't be very happy. So the ability to use second or third around town shift into fourth helps you maintain a nice rev range in this. Even though you've got almost full torque from zero RPM, all through that four and a half thousand to four and a half thousand, which we sort of software limit this motor to. We're using the dual shaft version of these Hyper 9 motors. And the dual shaft gives us another mounting face at the front. A Land Rover gearbox is only mounted at two points here, allowing it to have a little bit of movement and obviously connect to the engine and the engine mounts up here. But so, so in some, some cases you can install these directly onto the gearbox and it's supported only by the gearbox because the gearbox may be connected at three or four points. In a case like this, we need to support the, the, gear, the motor at the, the front end. Fortuitously, a standard electric motor that we use lines up almost perfectly with the original mounting engine mounting points in a series Land Rover. And we're able to use, create an adapter plate that then supports that and covers the additional shaft. These are what's called unbreakable engine mounts, well that's the brand, but they're originally engine mounts for LS V8 engines. The great thing about them is they're on, you know, they're really strong, but they're also on this uh, sort of angle adjustment um, seat so we can get a really nice angle that, that kind of puts the force into the center of the motor. We're not really trying to support weight where, you know, it's 50 kilos. Obviously there's a bit of that, but what we're really trying to support is rotational force from, you know, 250 Newton meters at, at peak uh, of, of rotational effort going through this. And so making sure that that any force and any tension is always accounted for. And really this is over-engineered for the job. You can see this little 
capping that there's there's a second shaft out the front here and that allows you to uh, in some cases use two of these together and couple them together and basically get twice the power or run accessories belt driven accessories off this front shaft an interesting little little thing is because originally land rovers had a, a power takeoff off the front and the ability to sort of hand crank the engine is that you can actually align the motor by aligning it through the original pto hole here and get you know we have a little tool that we can get a rod through there so we can get a perfect alignment through the through the shaft of the electric motor through to the gearbox and then out the other side and get that all level it's one of those things where i think the the combination of old and new methods and tools and systems comes into play so what we do initially is we have a 3d model of the the motor which is provided by the manufacturer and that gives us you know sort of perfect mounting positions for all the holes and everything like that so we can create a standard mount plate that bolts up to all the right holes covers the connection points all of that we can create uh, spacer panels and and little feet but one of the things that we have to be aware of is that every Land Rover well the electric motor may be perfectly precise a Land Rover is not and there will always be subtle variations within the the, the engine mounts and the way it's welded and the positioning of, of all of these components so what we do is actually create the the spacers so you can see there is a there's the mount there's a spacer so we can get around the 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 studs on the engine mounts and then we have these little uh, these little feet that come off those mounts. Now, those are something that we was easier for us to hand fabricate, then measure, and then turn into 3D for future vehicles, rather than trying to design something purely in the computer without context of a sort of slightly variable old Land Rover chassis, we can quickly fabricate one, measure it, get it into the computer so that we can then very quickly, uh, very easily mass produce these at you know, a scale of four or five at a time. What we do do it too is, is don't drill holes in one of these sides. So we can have this adjustable for every, every Land Rover, which we know will have slight millimeter variations, have one hole as a template, drill through the plate when it's perfectly aligned. The consideration, of course, is this is, was never designed to expect all of its torque delivered at zero RPM or regen braking as well, so that back pressure on the gears. So what we do is adjust the, the software tune of the motor to accommodate the fact and be a little bit friendlier to this, to this gearbox. So, you know, we don't, we don't dump, if you put your foot on the throttle, we don't dump all the torque at once we have a slow ramp profile over time and we can set a bunch of, of features to accommodate that including adjusting things like the the field weakening of the magnets so basically how the magnets are holding on and letting go as the shaft spins around and obviously there's magnets turning on and off and doing all these things you can adjust those timings to work a little bit better with the gearing of this motor understanding that there is intentionally some backlash in the gearing and all these kinds of things and backlash in the drive line that are meant to be there but you don't you don't have this sort of perfectly tight precision modern race car it's not that and it needs to be treated a little bit differently to be used in the way that it's intended to be used